Lord, everyone we want to pray for just to receive his family. She uh, lost her brother the other day, and, and I know it's got to be difficult. Uh, brother John, our deacon friend, uh, called and said that his truck broke down, so he's not with us this morning. And baby, we we know God's got it in His hands. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorn. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Let's worship God like we really mean it this morning. <laughs>
scripture for this morning. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, but theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. May God have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Amen. Thank you. 
Gospel of Mark. Beginning in verse 28 through verse 34. Verses 28 through 34. Amen. These prayers, amen, like Derek said, I need help. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any questions. May God have a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the preaching of his holy word. I don't talk about not far from the kingdom. Not far from the kingdom. The scribes were a class of people who were well versed in the law. They were the ones who made the scrolls and the copies of the law. And they were so particular about that that if they made an error more than X number of times, they had to do an entire manuscript over again. And coming to Jesus after hearing the Pharisees and the Sadducees, as the Sadducees and Herodians, excuse me, arguing with Jesus and Jesus answering them well, he comes now with his own question of Jesus. He asked the Lord, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus answered him, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God yes. is one. Yes. And then he went on, of course, to say, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, thy whole soul, with all thy mind and with all thy strength. And then the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love the na thy neighbor as thyself. And the man said, Lord, no, he didn't say Lord, he said, Rabbi, Master, you have answered well. You told the truth. Yes, yes, yes. Telling the Lord, he, he has the right answer. <laughs> that, that alone kind of lets you know that he's not exactly all the way in the kingdom. <laughs> Amen. And the Lord said, um, you have spoken wisely. You are not far from the kingdom. Now at first glance, that may seem like a compliment. <laughs> but, but, but do you want to be real close, but not far from the kingdom? How many times in our lives are we operating not far from the kingdom? Right there with the Lord. And still in our heads first. Rather than in the heart first. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now I know y'all never done that. I'm the only one. 
in here that's ever been there but not quite there. Have I got a witness? And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being almost some. I'm tired of being not far from the kingdom of God. Yes, the, 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 the scribe answered himself, already knew that the summation of the law was to love God with your whole heart, your whole soul, your whole mind, all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. He knew that much. But he was standing in front of the one who is the fulfillment of all of that. Even of those two laws, he's standing right in front of him. And more engaged in questioning him than in following him. Amen. He was just right there. And he came to Jesus. Because he wanted to show out a little bit about how much he thought he knew. And I think that there's, there's a reason why you have to watch everything in the Word of God. It says, love God with your whole heart and then soul and then third mind yes. and then fourth strength. <laughs> there's a reason why it's, it's written, written that way. The first Contact with God is not the mind. <laughs> we, we don't understand him anyway. His thoughts are higher above our thoughts than the heavens above the earth. So, so the first level of contact with God is the heart. Do you know how much he loves you? It's not so much that we don't know that we do love God. It's are we aware of how much he loves us? Can, can you feel it in your heart today? That God loves you. Amen. That's, that's a bigger problem than thinking you love him. The bigger problem is, am I aware of how much the infinite creator loves me? Oh, glory to God. We are somebody. So much so that he sent his own son to take upon himself flesh. He loved us that much. Oh, yes, he did. And I don't know about you, but God has done some unusual things in my life. And there ain't no reason why I ought to doubt his love for me. And there's still times when I forget how much he loves me. <laughs> Amen. I'm just close to the kingdom sometimes and, and not all the way there because I, I'm blocking the power of his grace. Yeah. I'm still trying to live in, in casuistry. He's trying to live in figuring things out so I can control life. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Rather than be vulnerable to him I want to run stuff. <laughs> so I come in my head first. Now if I do this, he'll do that. <laughs> Help me, Lord Jesus. Oh, but I, I know today that he's saying to us, my children, if you would just let me love you, I got you. <laughs> Whatever's going on, I got you. No matter what's going on. That kid is not quite there. Yeah. I can handle it. Yeah. If you just let me handle it. Yeah. You get out the way. Yeah. I can handle the situation. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Oh. He loves me and my kids. Yeah. He loves me and my grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> we try to handle it. Get in the way. <laughs> Mary Robinson. Michelle's mother was asked, how did your kids turn out so well? She said, I got out of the way and look at what happened. <laughs> Isn't that something? I got out of the way. I gave them permission to, to flourish as who they are, not as who I want them to be. 
They belong to God. Oh, yes, they do. And guess what? I do. And when I'm, when I'm assured of that, I stay out of the way. Oh, yeah. Because I'm so busy trying to get as much God as I can get. I don't need to fool with you. <laughs> Am I right about it? Nothing can satisfy me like the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nobody can do for me what only he can do. I feel it in my heart right now. Oh, yeah. He loves me. And guess what? He loves you. <laughs> Anytime he would come down here and die for us, how much more does he have to do? To give us, let us know. How can you look at Calvary and not melt? He could have snapped his finger and changed everything. But he, he wanted voluntary love. So he went on the cross. He said, they'll surely know how much I love them now. You got to feel something when you look at Calvary. And then the next level is the soul. And guess what? God speaks first to your soul before he does your mind. <laughs> the symbol of the text touches the soul before your intellect does anything. When God talks to you, he speaks in poetry. Have I got a witness? He's not, he doesn't talk to you in literal language, even though there's a literal meaning connected to it. God speaks in poetry. Listen, when you were dating as a teenager, and hopefully every now and then to your wife or husband, now, you talk in poetry. Do I have a witness? You, you, you spoke from your soul to the person. <laughs> when I was a freshman in high school, I, I thought I might want to take notes. It, it don't work like that. You can't take notes about what someone else said to a girl. It's got to come from your soul. Have I got a witness? You got to live from the soul first before you live from your mind. Otherwise, you won't have any common sense. You'll have too much sense. Oh, yeah. You love God with your whole heart and then soul. And then your neighbor as yourself. This is, this is all reception. First, the moon receives the light of the sun and reflects it back. You got to receive from your soul. Glory to God. And then mine. Now comes the understanding. After I get a message from him, the wisdom from him, then my mind can figure out how to apply it in a practical way. And even that needs to be illuminated by his grace. Intellect is a gift. But without wisdom from God, it's nothing. They've written all these books, five million pieces in the University of Arizona Library. But listen, they don't know nothing next to the Word of God. Because none of that is going to make a difference ultimately in history without the gospel. Oh, yeah. And then love him with all your strength. <laughs> Have you ever been completely worn out? And then the word of God comes in. And you feel stronger than you did when you worked out physically. <laughs> he is my strength. I got to surrender my strength to God. I can do anything. I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, sir. Even the youth shall faint and grow weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about being all the way in the kingdom. Heart first. Then soul, yeah. then mind, yeah. and then strength. Yeah. Glory to his name. Oh, yes. Jesus said, you are not far from the kingdom. And notice other folk heard the insult and said after that, nobody asked him a question. 
They, they knew Jesus was bagging on it. So they didn't ask any more questions. Have I got a witness? <laughs> Not that everybody's run out of their wisdom. <laughs> Ain't no more questions to ask. Hush up and listen to God. Amen. I remember how I insulted him one time. Lord, if you just tell me what you want me to do, you know I'll do it. He said, when are you going to do something for me without me having to drag you into it? I wept for an hour. Because I knew what the Lord wanted. I was playing a game. I thought I could get God to agree with me about what decision I ought to make. Uh-uh. He threw it. Listen. Jesus threw, took the power back. He said, you're not far from the kingdom. The man said, you, are, you, you spoke rightly, Lord. He didn't say Lord again. He said, Rabbi. And Jesus took the power back. You're not far from the kingdom. He remains in charge. In spite of us. Oh, yes, he does. Yes, yes, Even on the cross, yes. he was in charge. Yes. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yes. On the cross, he said, into your hands, I commend my spirit. He was in charge of the cosmos on the cross. Yes. And he was known as the Son of God by a centurion who said, surely this man yeah. is the Son of God. Amen. The King of love. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Not the King of conquering violence that they wanted, but the King of love. Yeah. He conquered the cosmos yeah. with love. Yeah. And they can do what they want. But guess what? Love is going to win in the end. Yeah. Oh, yes. He allowed them to nail his hands in the cross, on the cross. Oh, yes, he did. He could have prevented them from taking his life. Oh, yes, he could have. He could have snapped his finger or said a word. And all of them would have fell out dead. Yes. But he decided... To allow them to nail him to the cross, y'all. They lifted him up on the hill. Yes, they did. He bowed his head between the locks of his shoulders. Hallelujah. 